Hello, hippopotami. Oh, look at that. You can see some of the scars on that hippo's back from the fight. Now, normally when you see those type of big bulging scars, it'll be from males. But sometimes females will carry them as well. Um, they do defend themselves from males. Sometimes when there's a male fight, it gets really, really bad and it'll brush over into the raft of females. Now, it is a very cool morning this morning, and I wonder if these hippos are going to take advantage of some of that nice green grass that's on the edge there. Um, or they might even head out a little bit uh, to go feed. Now, it is not uncommon uh, when the weather is cool to find hippos feeding during the day, and uh, particularly in an, an area like this. Um, so it is always fascinating. Oh, someone's arrived to watch the hippopotami. Good morrow, Shannon in Ohio. Shannon would like to know, are hippos related to manatees? Um, or they are, they're in the same family. They are not, uh, Shannon, oh, well, we all related if we go down to um, the blue-green algae uh, 4.2 billion years ago, the first living creature. Uh, but uh, hippos and uh, manatees are not closely related at all. Now, we do have two types of manatees in Africa, uh, in East Africa and along the eastern coast. Uh, there's a dugong, which is actually a sea cow. It's much, much bigger than a manatee. And then on the west coast of Africa, we have the West African manatee. Now, I'm lucky enough to have been able to see both of those species. And of course, and hippos. Now, there's only one species of hippo, and I still think um, I quite like the uh, the, the Afrikaans name for a hippo. I actually quite like the Swahili name for a hippo as well. Uh, Dave, do you know what the Swahili name for a hippo is? It is Kiboko. Kiboko. Sounds like a hippo. Boko. Kiboko. 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 And where they walk. Um, but uh, the sea, sea kui, the sea cow. Um, or suppose not really sea cow. It should be a river kui, a river cow. But uh, far, far, looks a bit more like a cow than a, a horse, which it is sometimes called. Uh, one of those things. Now, of course, uh, hippos in the Mora occur in a lot of these little luggers and things as well. They're not confined to the river. So you've got to be very careful. Sometimes, uh, I think it was this one here, okay? And we drove through. Let me go on to the big map here. Um, no, no, let's go to here. That one's better. Uh, we drove through here. Where am I looking? Here. We drove through here and suddenly looked upstream and there was a hippo eye level with us. We, we quickly engaged a, a lower ratio gear and sped out. Now, as it sits, this is how we're looking at the moment. Oh, I wait, one more thing. Now, you see, I have a crocodile out in the open, Dave, but that crocodile is not on top of a ridge, Dave, because I know you were playing with my figurines, Dave, or James's figurines. Um, but there's a little stream that comes, where are we now? Where's, yeah, that comes here. And it runs like this. And it's not a very big stream at all. And this road actually follows it here. And I must say, most places, the, the stream's not even as wide as this table. And uh, we were driving past there, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Yesterday, the day before. There is a massive five meter crocodile in this tiny little stream. And that crocodile is obviously here for when those wildebeest come rushing through. Now, and this is incredible that the animal has adapted. It's miles from the main river, but it has got so big feeding on the migration. Now, it seems like Jamie has got a lovely vista of hartebeest that remembered to pull up their pants and some striped donkeys who are still in their pajamas. <laughs>